Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I am uh, again going to discuss about the same response codes, but in this particular lecture, I'm going to discuss about this 4xx request failure. It will be divided into three parts because it contains multiple response codes, uh, almost 25 to 30 response codes. So you will be getting uh, this 4xx request failure in three parts. In the previous lectures, I have discussed about this 1xx provisional responses, final or successful responses, and the redirection responses as well. If you have not seen those particular videos, then please go and check it out on my channel, right? So let's start with this 4xx request failure responses and let me share my whiteboard so that we can discuss about it. Okay, so let's start with this particular 4xx message. So we have almost around 30 messages under this one, but I'm gonna start with uh, first 10 in this lecture particular. What is this 4xx we can say? Uh, request failure messages we can call it as right or we request failure response or messages we can say right okay so we have so many things under this 4xx right so first we have uh, 400 that's what I that's what I remember for 400 that is what I'm going to discuss today then we have 401, 402, 403, 404. It is in series 404, 405, 406. Most probably 407, 408, and 410, I believe. Yes, that is what I'm going to discuss about today. 401, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. Yep. So 400, that is our first one that, uh, but we can call it as 400 is the message is bad request, right? And 401, I hope most probably everybody knows about this one. 401 unauthorized, right? After that 401 author unauthorized, we have 402, that is payment required. That is what we are not actually not using because this is reserved for future use. This is nothing. 403 uh, we can call name is forbidden request then we have 404 everybody see this one i believe in in their life we can say 401 not found then we have 405 we call it as method not allowed then we have 406 this is actually we can say not acceptable 407 that is also the same proxy authentication required. We usually see this in the in the particular safe traces if we are if we are checking something if there is a uh, maybe we are tracing something and checking something then we usually see this 407 401 like this. Then we have 408 408 most probably request timeout and 401 oh sorry 410 that's is gone. This is the name, <laughs> 410, gone. So let's start with the uh, 400 bad request, or we can say before starting, we have that 4xx request failure response messages, what we call it as. Um, we can say this, uh, as soon as you're getting this 4xx, that means this is a definite failure response from a particular server. Let me just write it down. This is a definite failure response from a, server right as soon as you get this 4x that means it's a failure and at that particular point of time the client should not retry the same request without doing any modification right for example we can say there's a request which needs authorization then you need to add appropriate authorization and then the client should retry the same request right but at first point of time, if you are getting this 4xx, the client should not retry the same request without doing any modification. Or we can say if you want to send uh, the same request, you can send it to a different server as well. Without modification, you can do, right? The same request, it can be or it cannot be successful to a different server, but you can send to a different one, right? 
So let's discuss about this one first. That is 400 bad request. Bad request, as the name indicates, bad request. That means your request could not be, uh, we can say, understood. Request could request could not be understood. That is 400 bad request, or we can say request is not understood, or we can say there is a, a, a bad response, bad response from the server. Or maybe uh, we can say whenever we are get, when we are getting this bad request is whenever we have a syntax error in the request. If you have a syntax error in the request, then you will get this 400 bad request, right? And the reason phrase will tell you, or I can say it will tell you the syntax problem in more detail. That is your reason phrase so you will be able to find a much more detail under the reason phrase right it will help you identify the syntax problem in more detail for example we can say the example for this one is we can say under the reason phrase you will be able to see let's say this one missing call id header field right that will be under your reason phrase right then we have this unauthorized 401 unauthorized message or i can say 401 unauthorized response that means this request requires this request requires user authentication right that is because it says 401 unauthorized that means you are not authorized that means i need an authentication right it says requires user authentication and this response is user uh, if this response is mainly issued by user agent server I, or we can say registrars as well right while we have another one which is uh, we can say almost same or probably same we can say this one unauthorized and this one 401 proxy authentication required right so usually we will get this one require user authentication right and this response is uh, issued by user agent server and registrars but whenever you are getting this one 407 proxy authentication required this is mainly used by proxy servers this request is, is this response is actually issued by user agent server or registrar servers but this 407 proxy authentication required is usually issued by your proxy servers I, I am actually adding these two in one 401 unauthorized and 407 proxy authentication required because these are exactly same right if you are looking for any training on sip then you can uh, come to this sipsense.com so you can just go to google and once you type sipsense then you will be able to see the first link which is sipsense.com and once you scroll it down you will be able to see three courses as here you can see sip basics sip foundation and sip advanced sip basics is free of cost and then we have this sip foundation and sip advanced courses if you would like to purchase any of these courses either sip foundation or sip advanced you can use my uh, coupon code that is technical hyphen venture and let me show you how you can enroll it so once we click on this sip advanced you will be able to see two courses again that will, first one would be enterprise another one enterprise plus ssc that is sip school certification let's say i'm going to click on this one select and after that you need to just fill out your details full name position and all and here you can apply my discount code that is technical hyphen venture so once we apply this one you will get a discount of 33 percent and now your checkout value would be 201 previously it was 300. then we have this one 402 payment required that is what we are actually not going to use this is reserved for future use so we are not going to discuss in much more detail for this one 402 payment required then we have 403 it's not forbidden it's actually forbidden okay 403 forbidden we can say uh, for this 403 forbidden your server usually understood the request in this one 403 forbidden server understood the request but server is actually 
uh, we can say refusing to accept it. I'm not saying server is accepting it. Server understood the request. What is the request? Server understood it. But that particular server is actually refusing to accept it. Then you will receive this response code that is 403 forbidden, right? And the request should not be repeated, right? Because server already understood, but he's actually not he is actually not accepting it. He is actually re uh, refusing it. So this request should not be repeated. Let me, I can maybe write it down as well. This request should not be repeated. This request should not be repeated and an authorization also will not help here as well, right? Maybe you have a question. If we can send uh, after uh, doing any mod modification, if we add the authentication, then would it be understand? No. Uh, that authorization also will not help here. Authorization will not help as well, right? Then after 403 forbidden, we have 404 not found, right? What does 404 not found means? That means your server has information that the user doesn't exist at the domain specified in the request URI, we can say. 404 not found. This particular means your server has particular information that user, uh, we can say user doesn't exist. Where user doesn't exist at the domain, which is specified in the request URI, right? That is why you will be getting this 404 not found. Right, or we can say you will get this error four zero four not found if, uh, if you if the domain in this particular request URI, uh, doesn't match any of the domains handled by the recipient of the request, right? If user doesn't exist at the domain, or if the domain doesn't match any of the domains handled by the recipient of the request, then you will get this particular four zero four not found error code. Right. Then after that, we have 405 method not allowed. What that means? Method not allowed means the method which is specified. The uh, I can write it a method which is specified in request URI. Right. The method which is specified in request. Ah, uh, not request URI actually. Method not method which is specified in the request line is understood but it's not allowed method which is specified in the request line is understood but not allowed for the address but not allowed for the address identified by the request uri right 405 method not allowed means method which is specified in the request line is actually understood, but that is not allowed for the address identified by the request URI. Correct. And the response must include an allow header field which contains a list of valid methods for indicated address. Right. Response will include whatever you are getting this 405 method not allowed, that is the response. In that particular response, there will be an allow header field. That allow header field will contain a list of valid methods, right? This method is not valid. That's why you get this 405 method not allowed. But in that particular response, you will be able to see under the allow header field, uh, you will get the valid methods for that particular address. Right, that is your 405 method not allowed. Then we have 406 not acceptable. What that means 406 not acceptable? That means the resource identified by the request is only capable of generating response entities which are not acceptable uh, we, I, we can say which are not acceptable according to accept header field sent in the request, right? 406 not acceptable, what that means, whatever resource, the resources there is identified by the request is only capable of generating 
response entities which are uh, we can say which are not acceptable which are not acceptable according to uh, just which are not acceptable according to accept header field mate right that is why you will get this 406 not acceptable message then we have this one 407 proxy authentication required this is actually we can say similar to 401 which is requires user authentication it is actually similar to 401 but it indicates that client must first authenticate itself with the proxy authenticate with the proxy right client must first authenticate itself with the proxy or we can uh, i can usually say it requires in a simple language i can say requires authentication with the proxy that's it actually the same thing but authentication yes authenticate with the proxy requires authentication with the proxy that's exactly the same thing it's just a uh, uh, change in the language right after that we have a 408 request timeout 408 request timeout that usually name indicates server could not produce a response within particular amount of time which is actually there right that means server could not produce a response within a suitable time we can say within suitable time within suitable amount of time right and this request may be repeated at any time without any modification right you can repeat the request as well then we have 410 gone that means requested response requested not response again the requested resource is no longer available here we have a resource requested resource is no longer available at the server and no forwarding address is known no forwarding address is known that means 40410 gone that means everything is gone <laughs> right that is why it says requested resources no longer available at the server and no forwarding is known right so that is what we have all about this particular uh 400 uh 4xx request failure or responses we can say uh we have discussed about these 10 4 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 10. in the upcoming lecture i'm going to discuss about the uh, rest of the responses starting with 413 414 415 and all right i hope you have learned something from this one if you really learned something then please hit like and let me know in the comment section about anything and please subscribe my channel if you are new to my channel and please press the bell icon as well so that you will be able to receive notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thank you.